Magic Tree House, Book Number Forty Seven, A Merlin Mission, Abe Lincoln at Last, by Mary Pope Osborne. Chapter Five, Leave Now. Excuse me, young lady, Mister Nicolay said. This is not a time for play. I'm not playing, sir," said Annie as she and Jack stood at the front of the crowd. "We're friends of Tad and Willie's, and Willie just told us to come here to the president's office. He wants to introduce us to his dad." Mister Nicolay scowled. "I'm afraid, Mister Willie, misspoke." The president does not have time to meet you now," he said. "He is in a private meeting with delegates from California, Indiana, and Maine. Maybe later, then," said Annie. "Not maybe later," said Mr. Nicolay. "After this meeting, he is scheduled to have a meeting with his generals, and then a meeting with the Department of the Navy." Excuse me. A man in the crowd called out, "But I heard the president say he'd like to meet us." Jack broke in. "I can't imagine why he said that," said Mr. Nicolay, shaking his head. "Following all the meetings I just listed, President Lincoln will meet with foreign diplomats, then with a group of senators, and then with reporters from the New York Times." Mr. Nicolay, listen to me. Someone shouted, "So, sir," Annie interrupted. "You're saying he'll have no free time at all today?" "Oh, he might have a free moment," said Mr. Nicolay. "But should that mere the president will go for a horseback ride in the country and have a private meeting with himself?" "Got it," said Annie. She took a deep breath. Well, maybe you can just answer one question for us. Do you know if the president collects feathers? Mr. Nicolay threw up his hands. This is no time for silly questions, he said. Our country is divided, young lady. We are on the brink of war. What do you mean, sir? One of the men in the crowd shouted. What's the news from Fort Sumter? Yes. What do you know that we don't know? A lady called. Everyone started shouting at once. That's it. Leave now, everyone. Mr. Nicolay said. The president is busy. He works night and day for you and for the unity of this nation. As the crowd shouted back at the secretary, Jack tugged on Annie's sleeve. Let's get out of here, he said. We should wait. For Willie," said Annie. "I don't think Willie can help us," said Jack. "Come on, let's go back to the tree house and look at our research book. Maybe we can think of something else." "Okay," said Annie, sighing. She and Jack hurried along the hallway, then down the stairs to the first floor. They wove through the crowd, then escaped out the main door. Phew! That place is nuts," said Jack as they walked between the tall white columns of the White House. "Are you sure we shouldn't wait for Willie?" said Annie. "I'm sure," said Jack. He hurried down the carriageway. Even if Willie took us back to the office to meet his dad, we wouldn't be alone with the president. Lots of other people would be there too. We couldn't ask him for a feather. And we sure couldn't give him any hope. Everyone would laugh. You're right," said Annie. Jack shook his head. How can the president even think in that place with Tad jumping on him, his relatives visiting, his secretary yelling, and a thousand people scheduled to meet with him?" said Annie. And another thousand who are trying to meet with him," said Jack. They had arrived back at the tree house. Whew! No wonder the president needs to take a ride in the countryside by himself. Jack said. He grabbed the sides of the ladder. Let's go up and look at the book. Wait," said Annie. "I have a good idea." "What?" asked Jack. 
Right now, we really need to have our own meeting with Abraham Lincoln alone," said Annie. "Right?" "Yes." "So," said Jack. "So if that's the one thing we need, our book can't really help," said Annie. "But I know something that can." "What?" said Jack. Annie reached into her apron pocket. She pulled out the bottle and read the label aloud. "Take a sip. Make a wish for one thing to help you on your mission. Remember, just the magic." Annie looked up at Jack. "So why don't we make a wish to have a private meeting with Abraham Lincoln? Isn't it too soon to use our only magic?" said Jack. "Maybe, but maybe it's the perfect time," said Annie. So we wish to have a meeting with the president all by ourselves," said Jack. "Yep," said Annie. Jack couldn't think of another plan. "Well, okay," he said. "Let's do it. Just remember, we have to trust the magic," said Annie. Jack nodded. Annie took the top off the bottle. She raised the bottle to her lips. Then swallowed a quick sip of the potion. She handed the bottle to Jack, and he did the same. "You can make our wish," said Annie. Jack squeezed his eyes shut. "We wish to have a meeting with Abraham Lincoln," he said, "alone." There was a deafening whoosh and a roar. The earth shook like a speeding train passing by. The ground opened. And Jack felt as if he were falling through space, through a tunnel, down through blackness, into a world of daylight. Chapter six. Just the magic. Clouds hid the sun. Jack and Annie sat in a clump of dead weeds behind a dirt road in the countryside. A chilly wind blew the creaky limbs of bare trees. You okay? Asked Annie. I think so," said Jack. "Where are we?" "Looks like we're somewhere in the country," said Annie. "No kidding, but where? Why?" said Jack. "Wait, wait," said Annie. "Mr. Nicolay said if the president had a free moment, he'd take a ride in the country. I'll bet we've come to a spot where we can catch Abraham Lincoln on his ride alone." Oh wow! Cool," said Jack. "Look," said Annie. "Someone's coming this way now on a horse." A slim figure on a horse was coming down the dirt road. Jack and Annie jumped to their feet. When the rider on the bony white horse got closer, Jack sighed. "It's not the president," he said. "It's just some kid on an old horse." Maybe this kid is supposed to help us somehow," said Annie. "Remember, trust the magic." Jack nodded, but he couldn't imagine why the boy would be much help. He looked to be ten or maybe eleven years old. His matted black hair stuck out from under a coonskin cap. His thin face was dirty, and his buckskin pants and moccasins were stained and torn. A frayed burlap sack hung from his shoulder. Annie stepped into the road and waved. "Hello!" she called. The boy pulled the old horse to a halt. He took off his cap and bowed his head. Then he put his cap back on and looked at them with tired gray eyes. "How do?" he said without a smile. "We do good," said Annie. "We're wondering if you can help us." We are looking for Abraham Lincoln. Does he ride his horse around here? Have you ever seen him? The boy's eyes brightened. You're looking for Abraham Lincoln? He asked. Yes, we are," said Jack. Why? The boy asked. Um. Well, we just want to say hi to him," said Jack. Do you know if he goes riding in this area? The boy nodded. He does," he said. "In fact, he is in this area as we speak." "Really?" said Annie. 
She smiled at Jack as if to say, "See, the magic's working." Jack couldn't help smiling back. So, can you tell us where we can find him? He asked the boy. Yes, said the boy, nodding. But I think it's better if I take you to him myself. I just have to grind some corn at the mill first. How long will that take? Jack wondered. How long will the president be riding in the countryside? Maybe you could just tell us where we could find him," said Jack. "We don't have much time." "Wait," said Annie. She whispered to Jack, "We have to trust the magic." Jack sighed. He looked back at the boy. "Okay, we'll go to the mill with you," he said. "But it would be good if we could hurry." So we don't miss finding Abraham Lincoln. You won't miss him. I give you my word," said the boy. "Come along. The grinders are around the bend. Giddy up, girl." He shook his reins, and the old horse started plodding down the road again. Jack and Danny walked after the slow-moving horse. "Our names are Jack and Danny," Annie called. "What's yours? You can call me Sam." The boy said over his shoulder, "Okay, Sam," said Annie. "Thanks for helping us." A gust of wind stirred the branches of the trees. The old horse neighed and stopped. "Keep going, girl," said Sam. But the horse wouldn't budge. She doesn't hear well. She gets spooked by the wind," Sam explained to Jack and Danny. The lonely sound of the wind spooked Jack too. Something felt wrong. This weather was different from the weather at the White House. "Giddy up, girl," said Sam. The horse started plodding down the road again. When they rounded the bend, Jack saw a strange-looking machine in a clearing. It had a barrel-like container with a wooden beam attached to it. Metal rods hung from the end of the beam. "What's that?" said Jack. "The grinder," said Sam. You ain't never seen one before, sure we have," said Annie. No one was tending the grinder or waiting to use it. Sam dropped his sack to the ground and dismounted. He was tall and skinny. His buckskin pants were too short for him. "What's in your bag?" asked Annie. Twenty pounds of corn," Sam said. "Shelled it all by hand." "Wow," said Annie. Sam poured the corn kernels into a funnel over the barrel. Then he hitched his old horse to leather strap attached to the metal rods. Jack and Danny stood to the side and watched Sam walk his horse around in a circle. After a while, Jack grew impatient. The corn grinding seemed to be taking forever. Before he could say anything, though, a gust of wind came up. And the horse reared. Keep moving, girl," said Sam. The horse neighed and tossed her head. "Go on, girl, giddy up," said Sam. He slapped her backside. "Giddy up," I said. The horse didn't budge. These nice folks are waiting on us," said Sam. He pushed the horse from behind. The wind picked up. Tossing dead leaves into the air, the horse neighed again, then kicked out with her hind foot. Her hoof hit Sam in the head. His coonskin cap flew off as he fell backward and sprawled across the ground. Sam cried, "Annie!" Jack and Annie knelt in the dirt beside the boy. A trickle of blood ran down the side of his head. His eyes were closed. Sam said, "Annie, can you hear me?" She wiped the blood with her apron. Sam didn't answer or open his eyes. "Hey, Sam," Jack said loudly, "wake up!" But Sam didn't move. He didn't even seem to be breathing. Jack and Annie looked at each other. "Is he dead?" whispered Annie. 